Anyway. I'll just do a little quick review. Um, you know, like, this really was a fantastic game. Uh, it, you know, like, when I think about Watch Dogs, I played that game first, and then I played this game. And I can see where it got a lot of inspirations from. It wasn't just GTA, it was also this game. But I think this game pulled off a lot of the things that Watch Dogs was trying, at least Watch Dogs alone. Uh, it pulled them off better. Um, when you're just going, like, traversing the land and exploring the world or going from one mission to another, you see the people in this world going about their lives. And you see lots of scripted events happening, which you can partake in in doing side missions. And it feels really organic, really authentic. Um, whereas in uh, Watch Dogs... It did try to do some of that, but it got really repetitive. Whereas in this game, you know, it was varied enough to still feel convincing. And I really like that. Because, you know, seeing the inhabitants of a game world going about doing their their day-to-day -day lives helps make it feel more believable. Make, helps make it feel more real. And less like you're playing a game. And, and more like you're experiencing something. You know? And that's really what makes this this game so so special. Um, the missions themselves were really varied and fun. The gunplay was really fun. Um, really solid. Good good cover system. It does have auto aim, but this is a console only game, so it kind of does need that. And a lot of games do that. I didn't really think it, it broke the game too much. The only part where you could maybe make that argument is when you're playing, when you're riding a uh, shotgun on those uh, on those uh, carriage missions. Um, the graphics in this game are really, really good. Um, I'm playing this in standard definition on the composite cable, and it still looks amazing. So that's. It's not easy to achieve that it can still look great, even though it's being played in standard definition. Um, and it goes beyond just simple aesthetics. Um, it helps make the ca characters look more believable. You know, the facial expressions and how they react to uh, other characters in the game. That kind of believability, how authentic it is. That matters so much in a story-driven game like this. And the story itself is told in a great way. Um, it's like I mentioned before, the game, like other Rockstar games, is... is it's, it's, it's made the way that you would shoot a film, a real film. You know, little things like how uh, Bonnie looked at John Marston, you know, longingly after he left, you know, how the camera just kind of hung on her. You know, having that one shot says so much more about how she feels about him than anything that she could ever say. You know, and it's those little things, being able to create content with the framing of the camera and who you position it on and how long you position it there, that builds content. And, you know, the developers, they didn't, they didn't half-ass this game. And you can tell the production values are through the roof, really. Um, the horse physics, they kind of, you know, if you're used to Zelda, they take some getting used to. Uh, but once you really get used to them, they, they really are better than, than most of the horse physics that I played in, in other games like Zelda. Uh, they're definitely better than, than the horse mechanics in Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, I think they, they work really well here. Um, and the diff there's different kinds of horses that you can get with different handling, different top speeds. So that adds a, a lot of depth to it. Um, there's so many side missions that you could do. We stuck mostly to the main missions. Uh, but I can definitely see people playing this game for, you know, hundreds of hours, you know, just unlocking everything and, and earning more money. Hell, even, like, playing poker, to me, was fun. 
uh, Owly enjoyed playing uh, Dice. So there's there's a lot to do in the game besides just doing the main missions. But even if you do stick to the main missions, it's still a ton of fun. Um, so there really aren't a lot of negatives, and I don't usually go looking for negatives in a video game. If there if there isn't anything worth griping over, then I won't say anything because there's just no point. Uh, the only thing I will say is um, I didn't like their handling of the Native Americans. You know, it's such a sensitive issue. This is a video game that's made by white people, so they are inevitably not... They may not be able to handle it the way that they're supposed to, and they didn't. Um, it's not so much as they handled... They depicted them in they demonized Native Americans. They didn't, but at the same time, they didn't depict them appropriately. The one good Native American in the game was killed off uh, very quickly by his own people. Uh, the rest are, are the bad guys. They are lackeys to this white guy who you're really after, and you're willing to kill all the Native Americans that stand in your way in order to get to that one guy, and he eventually falls down a cliff. <laughs> you know? Like, is that really how we wanted to pick Native Americans, you know, in this kind of, like, means-to-an-end kind of deal? You know, it really isn't all that different from the refrigerated women, women in refrigerators trope, right? They're just there to serve the narrative of the, of the main character rather than being three-dimensional, fleshed-out characters who are dynamic and treated with the respect that they deserve. I don't really think that they were depicted all that great in this game. They also looked kind of weird. Um, maybe it might be the the resolution of the game, but they didn't they didn't look all that great, in my opinion. Um, but really, that's it. Uh, the voice acting in this game is fantastic. Everything is really spot on. Everyone sounds like how they're supposed to. Most of them are Hicks, so they sound like Hicks. The Mex Mexicans sound like Mexicans, and the Native American, the one that we actually heard from, actually sounds like a Native American, and he was intelligent. Yeah, it's just a shame that they had to kill him off. As for the ending, um, I don't really have a big problem with it. Um, because I wasn't, like, I won't say that John Marston was a horrible character, he wasn't a good character. He was just a guy trying to find his family, right? So I'm indifferent towards him. So I didn't really mind that ending. Uh, but I can understand why some people wouldn't. But to me, like, actually, I kind of prefer it. It seems fitting and appropriate given that he is a morally dubious character anyway. The game never depicted him as morally righteous. You know, they never depicted him as, as like that. He did do some morally righteous things, but he also did some morally deplorable things too. So I don't really have a problem with, with the ending in that sense. Really, the only problem I have is that kind of weird thing that happened after that, where you're spending a lot of time looking for, for uh, that one guy, and then <laughs> then that's it. That is a little odd. I would have liked... I don't mind that they... They went in that... They, they focused on... on J um, Marston Jr. Uh, but... Uh, I don't know. There should have been more... More depth to it, I guess. It was bringing things to a close, and I don't mind it being short. It should be short, but... There, there should have been a little bit more depth to it. It's kind of hard to explain exactly why it feels off, but a lot of people do agree that the ending wasn't good. I'm not entirely sure if they don't like the ending because of what happened to John Marston, or because of everything that happened after that. I would say the ending is kind of weak for me because of everything that happened after that. That's what I think. So what did, every, 